You see many things on the Curiosity Show which you can try yourself at home, but not all of them. For example, Rob went into the lion's cage at the circus. Also, I tried the flying trapeze at the circus, but only after some careful training and help by the experts. Here's something else for you to watch, but not to try. I didn't feel a thing when the concrete slab broke. It was, in fact, very heavy concrete, and that helped us in a strange sort of way. It had a lot of stuff in it, a lot of mass. And things that have a lot of mass also have something that's called inertia. They tend to stay right where they are. So once it was balanced on the chest, we knew it would stay there, right in that position, and as long as we timed the swing of the sledgehammer just right, perhaps we could hit it with enough force to crack the concrete but not damage me underneath it. Well, anything that has mass has inertia. This apple has mass and it has inertia. So if we place it on my elbow like that, I can do something else, move my hand very quickly. And it takes a while. It, it did drop, of course, but it drops slowly enough for me to catch up with it and catch it. That looks like a, a very cunning trick, but you can do it easily yourself. You can do it with a coin as well. There's a 20 cent coin on my elbow, and I can catch that without any trouble at all. Here's five 20 cent coins. You think I can catch those? Yes, and I'm sure you can. I want you to try it with 20 20 cent coins. See how you go then. All right, here's another 20 cent coin. This one is balanced on top of a ring of cardboard over a glass. It'll tend to stay right where it is, provided I do whatever else I'm going to do very quickly. You can probably guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to place the ruler in the ring, and then very quickly I'm going to pull it to one side. And I can make the coin drop straight down into the glass. Here's a pile of 20 cent coins. Now it would be relatively easy to knock them off the top of the pile one at a time. Remembering that the coins have mass, they have inertia, it should be possible to take them out from the bottom of the pile by hitting them with the back of the knife one at a time. Let's see if we can do that. The rest of them should just stay there. Let's see if we can take out that bottom coin. There it goes. And there's the next one. And the next one. And so on you can go down through the pile. Well, how do you think it would go with a set of uh, draft pieces or checkers? You might say, oh, they'll be much easier to hit. They're wider, they're broader, no trouble at all. But look what happens, they fall in a heap. The reason they do that is because, although they're larger and have broader sides, they're also very light. They don't have much mass, they're hollow plastic. And so they don't have as much tendency to stay where they are. Don't work nearly as well. What if you're trying to hammer a nail into a piece of wood? You have to remember two things here. There are two hammers to choose from. Not only do things with more mass have more tendency to stay where they are, but once they start moving, a more massive object, a heavier object, has more tendency to keep going. So what do you think would be easier to hammer a nail into a piece of wood with? A little light hammer like that, or heavy hammer, like this one? Of course, the heavier one, because once you get it moving, it tends to keep going. Well, what if you don't have a hammer around, but rather a uh, rock or a brick? Which of those would you choose as a makeshift hammer? Well, of course, you'd choose the brick because it has more mass, more inertia, more tendency to stay still, but also more tendency to keep on moving once you get it moving. Once, sometimes we say it has more momentum, a thing that tends to keep moving. Right, and let's see. 
makes quite a good hammer. But here's an even better way to get that nail into the wood. The block of wood itself happens to have far more mass than the brick. So what I can do is turn the block upside down and then just gently let it drop onto the brick, like that. And the nail goes in quite easily. That has a lot of momentum, a lot of tendency to keep on moving once you get it moving. In fact, if you've ever seen a ship docking, you've probably noticed that the captain or the pilot has to be very, very careful as he comes into the harbour. He may be moving very slowly, even as slow as a snail, but he knows because the ship has so much mass, it tends to keep on doing whatever it's doing. If it's still, it tends to stay still. If it's moving slowly, it'll tend to stay moving. And if he's not careful, and if he hits that wharf, he can do all sorts of damage. Well, think of mass, think of inertia, think of momentum next time you see somebody practicing one of the martial arts, like Taekwondo. Because there, a lot of the moves depend on very rapid movements of the arms or the feet, and they know that once they start those limbs moving, they will tend to keep on moving through whatever happens to be in the way.